Good evening, Raider baseball fans, and welcome to another night of Rouse Raider baseball. District 25 5A, Jonathan. It's coming down to the wire. I was talking with the coaches prior to the game start uh, about where we're at. Liberty Hill faces Hayes this week, which will be their toughest opponent left in the district schedule. We still have Cedar Park, so it could be that it's going to come down to these last two weeks to determine who that district champion will, will be. Hayes can play the spoiler and upset Liberty Hill. They're good enough. Cullen Lee is a, a solid enough pitcher on the mound against Blaze Milam that that game tonight should be an interesting contest. Yeah, and, of course, what we'll always wonder is which Blaze Milam is going to show up. You know, we saw the stud. The stud that got him to where he was or is at this point, he was an absolute stud uh, against Rouse Raiders when we played him in week two of district play. And, yes, Hayes can definitely play the spoilers. There is always that possibility. But, as always, Raiders don't need to look past these Glenn Grizzlies as they have also had a, a game win against one of the top guys this year, I believe. So, you don't ever want to rule out that possibility and – Focus on the goal, right? You know, focus on the goal of trying to get that number one seed, uh, which, you know, interestingly enough, I was looking at the our opponents uh, in the Comal ISD area, and I don't think New Braunfels Canyon is actually going to make it this year. Yeah, it doesn't they look like they do. They're, they're, they were like sitting sixth or seventh in their district right Even, now. If they win out, they would need help. But if they win out, they would go into a potential tiebreaker for the fourth spot. Uh, that's their only possibility of getting in there. So, so needless right, to yeah. say, there's always going to be a change now for us this year. Smithson so. Valley sitting atop that district yeah, right now, and they're number one in, ranked number one in state. Grapevine uh, dropped a spot. Uh, and then Bernie Champion's and, right there. And District 25 5A well represented in 5, 6, and 7. That will be Liberty Hill, Cedar Park, and Rouse. Yes, sir. And I'll tell you what, you know, these two divisions that are going to go against each other, see Bernie Champion. Uh, yeah, we can definitely show you all right now uh, the top 25. And, again, well, Grapevine is still in one. Uh, Smithson Valley in two. Lucas Lovejoy and Bernie Champion has actually dropped all the way down to number nine when they were in the three spot uh, right behind Smithson Valley. So that's interesting. But the one thing, Bernie Champion and Smithson Valley have not squared off yet. Right. I think they're going to either be this week or next week as the final. So that will be very interesting to see how that shakes up and Smithson Valley undefeated. So um, this is this is the interesting thing about it. The game that Bernie Champion lost, they lost to Piper. Yes. 13 to 3. And we thought that Piper may work their way in, and they have not found themselves sliding into the top 25. Yeah, but, but look at La Jolla Palmview. Look where they're at. And look at their yes. records. Yes. So they're they're in that top 25, and they're they've only lost just a, a handful of games. Uh they've got a total losses of uh <laughs> two losses on the yeah. entire year 22 2 and 1 according to uh the diamond pro thsb top 25 so right. you know and then again as you mentioned liberty hill cedar park rouse being the five six and seven so very very eerily similar to what we saw in 2021 right. uh with uh that you know we had four all four with when we played with georgetown and georgetown was in there and all four of the top four within the 25 yeah. 5a we're all representing in the top 10 so let's re let's recap last week's games correct yes sir so 25 5a scores from last week uh we did see rouse uh taking care of hayes 6-1 and 7-0 so returning the favor of last year going 0-2 raiders did to the hayes hawks and and this year being able to take care of business and get out of that one with 2-0 Cedar Park taking care of Glenn, actually blanking Glenn in both games, 7-0 and 6-0. So that'll be our opponent tonight. Leander uh, beating Lehman in the first game, 5-1, and then losing to them, 8-7 in game two. So very interesting there how that changes the dynamics of our top eight or the, the eight teams in our district. And then Liberty Hill handling uh, easily Lockhart 3-0 and 13-2, which again brings us to our 25-5A standings, uh, which does see, again, Liberty Hill at the top at 8-2, along with the Raiders, 
and the Cedar Park Timberwolves. So that sets up next week where Cedar Park and Raiders face off at what will determine possibly the one, two, or three seeds coming right. out of our stand, out of our district if Liberty Hill were to lose. Right. Uh, again, not having a, you know, Hayes could be that spoiler tonight. Uh, Hayes sitting at six and four. Leander Lyons five and five. Uh, in the uh, sixth spot is the Lehman Lobos at three and seven, and then seven and eights are Glenn and Lockhart Lions at one and nine. So, so the game Saturday, Raiders dropped the game to Lake Belton nine to three, but that didn't really hurt Rouse in the top twenty-five standings. They stayed static at number seven. Correct, but and- Cedar Cedar Park hopscotched and jumped ahead where they had fallen in back of Rouse last week. Correct. Top 25. uh, And Lake Belton still behind Rouse. Yes. And, you know, again, everybody's looking at as a non-district game. And we sort of talked and hit on this a lot. There's a lot of different scenario, a lot of different mindsets, coaching mindsets on how you go into a game like that. And Coach Crimpine's time he's always used a non-district game to try to figure out any positional players that he needs to change lineup players that he mean that he may need to change and we'll see some of those changes again tonight as he's trying to find that formula that final formula going into district or, or the playoffs that's going to allow this team to advance as far as they possibly can and he always seems to find the way, you know, he whether he benches a guy for three quarters of the season and has a feeling and he comes in and 2023 record. They were 11, 18, four and 10 in district. They have six returning starters with four seniors and two juniors. Your Rouse Raiders come in to tonight. 26, I mean, 21, six and one on the season, eight and two in district play. They're coached by Chad Crimpine and Manny Perez, Dan LaPaglia, and Will Noble. They're 2023 record, 30 12 and 1, 95 in district and regional finalists with seven returning starters. The lineups are being introduced, and so we will do the same. Leading off for your Rouse Raiders will be Rainer Heinrich at second base. Batting second will be number 12, Tyler Espinoza in right field. Batting third will be the first baseman, number eight, Oscar Salazar. Batting fourth will be number 10, Landon Miller in center field. Your designated hitter, eleven, um, number 11, Andrew Sanchez, will be hitting for the starting pitcher tonight. Number six, Gavin Silva. Batting sixth will be the third baseman, number 22, Nathan Miller. Batting seventh will be the left fielder, number 21, Rylan Payne. Batting eighth will be the shortstop, number seven, Jacob Solis. And rounding out the order will be the starting catcher tonight, number 14, Xander Forsell. The Xander. And you talk about Xander Forsell. He has had a hot bat as of late. He is on a tear. And I'll tell you what, Oscar Salazar started out the season on fire. Has has only cooled off a little bit. And I only say that because I want to have everybody understand how hot of a bat Xander Forsell is swinging yeah. right now. Well, extra Os- base after extra base hit for the last four games. So Oscar Salazar, one of the RBI leaders in the state. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. Awesome to see. And uh, we, again, only hope to continue that through the season and in throughout the playoffs. The Glenn Grizzlies will lead off with the shortstop, number seven, Chase Roberts. Batting second will be the second baseman, number 13, Ruben Cantu. The designated hitter, number 21, Billy McHenry, will be hitting for the starting pitcher tonight, number two, Blake Rickmers. Batting fourth will be the catcher, number 19, Jacob Fallon. Batting fifth will be the third baseman, number four, Ronan Murray. Batting sixth will be number 17, Aaron Wagner in right field. Batting seventh will be... The first baseman, number 22, Anthony Hudson. Batting eighth will be number one, Mason Harlow in left field. And rounding out the order will be the center fielder, number six, Anthony Rodriguez. So a lot of different names that we see here for the Glenn Grizzlies. Um, Again, they do have six returning starters, but 
you know, we're missing those names like Holden Harris. Right. You know, that, that we have become accustomed to seeing and, and Heath McCormick, um, Wren. Yeah, who is our TCU? Uh, TCU's Holden Harris. Holden, Holden Harris, Harris yeah, right. is up at TCU, and uh, you know, just a, a lot of uh, really good guys there um, that are have moved on, you know, and graduated as as our boys have, and yours several years before, and mine yeah. last year. So, you know, we will uh, look to see what this new Glenn group has to offer. So we're going to take a moment for the national anthem. We'll be right back with you in just one moment. It's baseball time in Texas as we're ready to get underway here, Jonathan. Another night of baseball. District 25, 5A baseball, one of the toughest districts in the state of Texas. When you've got three teams that are sitting in the top ten and still yet to determine the district champion, you're you're in a tough district. Well, and not to Smith mention. And, Smith and Valley is undefeated in their district. Yes, sir, and not to mention. The Hayes Hawks were in the top 25 leading into last week's matchup against the Raiders. Uh, they does see them slip out. They were in the 23rd spot. It did see them after going 0-2 to the Raiders. Uh, they did slide outside, but I would expect to think that they're in 26 spot, you know, just barely out of that top. And if they were to get a win this week against the Panthers, Liberty Hill, I'll be right that back could in easily there. see them climb right back into that top 25 with a good team. And, of course, there. Rouse is pulling for Hayes this week and the opponents of Cedar Park. Defensively for the Grizzlies on the mound, number two, Blake Rickmers. Behind the plate, number 19, Jacob Fallon. At first base, number 22, Anthony Hudson. At second base, number 13, Ruben Cantu. At third base, number four, Ronan Murray. At shortstop, number seven, Chase Roberts. In left field, number one, Mason Harlow. In center field, number six, Anthony Rodriguez. And in right field, number 17, Aaron Wagner. Do up for your Raiders in the first. Heinrich, Espinosa, and Salazar. Yeah, and again, we'll love to see if Rayner can keep a hot bat going. He's um, it's been, he, he came back into form against Lake Belt, I believe going four for four in that game. Uh, was all over the place, singles, doubles. I mean, he looked really, really good and very comfortable again as we Raider, have seen him the, have a few of those Raider, games that are just not normal for him. Uh, he's normally very aggressive, gets on base early and often, and really contributes – offensively for the squad and uh, just again ha that falling off just a hair a skosh just as my a colleague skosh. would say and we'll see if he can get things started off here uh, with that little dinger oppo right center double here we go Rickmers winds and deals to Nerner Heinrich and he'll take a strike down and away for yeah, strike one we're, we're well off center oh, of we uh, behind home plate here, folks. So we'll do our best. The 0 1. That oh my. gets the outside corner for strike two. Okay. And Heinrich quickly down 0 2. Yeah, but doesn't look to be disgusted with those calls. So. 
The 0-2 pitch, this fastball, it's hit over the head of Cantu and into right center field. And Heinrich will stretch it out into a double. <laughs> Probably dove a little bit sooner than what he wanted because he slid 40 that, feet. <laughs> that turf that turf was like glue there for a little bit. A leadoff double for Rainer Heinrich on a little poke out to right center. And it was Castradamus there. I said right center for a yeah. double. There you go. But I did say first pitch, and, and it, it was a third pitch. So Casper Domus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but he did. He actually, Rainer, understanding the, the fact that turf allows you to slide a lot faster and a lot further than. Yeah, as what Ryland Payne fi- found does. out on Saturday when he slid over the bag at Lake Belton. And yes, he got tagged. He got tagged. Tyler Espinosa makes his way to the plate. But honestly, Rainer not looking, not putting on the brakes at all. He was head down and was absolutely determined to get that leadoff double uh, as he slid in there with zero issues. And Espinosa will hit a bloop little single out to right. And Rainer Heinrich will score. And he will advance on the throw to home. Yeah, it, we'll have to see what an we have. RBI, an RBI single. Yeah, we'll have to see what we have. A, a shallow hit, and uh, the boys are testing, the Raiders runners are testing those outfield arms early, as we have seen Rainer Heinrich stretch what should normally be a single into a double, and again, what should normally be a single for Tyler Espinoza, and he was able to get two bags on that to score. Salazar will stand in. Rickmers will deal. That will get away from Fallon. And Espinosa will hit the third on the pass ball. Pass ball. Yeah, and I'm not sure how many starts Rickmers has on the season as I was uh, making my way down uh, near the bullpen area where he was warming up. The coach was asking him if he was nervous. So. Rickmers from the stretch. He will deal high and inside for ball two. We want to thank you all for tuning in and watching Rouse Raider baseball here on SHN Sports. Salazar will line this one to left. Harlow will play it and cut it off, but that will score Tyler Espinosa, and the Raiders take a quick two-run lead. And Oscar just patting those RBI stats. And absolutely nuked right over the shortstop's head. And well played by the left fielder, Mason Harlow, to be able to cut that from going to the fence as it was very well struck. Pitch down and away for ball one to Landon Miller. Andrew Sanchez on deck. You know, I look over at Sanchez and I see Colin Correjo. Yes, sir. You know, as far as his stature and build. And the number. Yeah, would love to and see. Check swing. He holds up for ball two. Would love to see him get the bat going, just like Colin Correjo. And another one that we would love to see get the bat going more frequently here is Landon Miller, who's up to bat. Throw over to first, and that will go to the fence. A bad throw by Rickmers. Salazar will round second and head to third. On the throw to first. And a quick time call by the catcher. Fallon. Jacob Fallon Jacob behind the Fallon, plate. Jacob Fallon, who's just trying to go and settle his hurler here. His Rickmers, you know, just throwing that ball down and away. And in most situations, a first baseman's going to be able to handle that, but it does get away from him. And that would be a throwing error you know, by the books, but you always hope for your first baseman to help you out on those. The 2-0 pitch to Miller, high and inside for ball three. Landon does not, oh, he does look to go see his coach giving him the green light <laughs> on a 3-0 count. The 3-0 delivery, he shows bunt and lays off, and that will be a strike. Taken all the way as he rounds off to show bunt, but pulled back. Fallon gives the sign, and Rickmers comes set, the 3-1 pitch. This is lined down to third, and that's played well by Murray. 
And the throw over to first in time, and it holds Salazar as Murray played that one so quickly. He did. He actually had to, knowing the speed of Landon Miller. He was able to dive and, and smother that ball from no, getting past him on the third base line. Hopped up and a great strong throw across the diamond to get the out. One away for Andrew Sanchez. Sanchez, the designated hitter for the Raiders tonight. First pitch is cut on and missed for strike one. You know, talking to Coach before the game, and, you know, again, he's just really trying to find that last piece in the lineup. That pitch misses low for ball one, and that will leave it up. Nathan Miller on deck. And he really believes Andrew Sanchez to be that guy, and, and we've seen that already early this season where he is possesses a ton of power, does Andrew Sanchez, and, you know. Sanchez will hit this one out to center. And that will be caught. Oh. Salazar. And Oscar oh, Oscar. Oscar thought that the ball was down. He ran back to third to tag up and tripped over the bag. <laughs> so he was not able to to tag up and come home for the RBI for Andrew Sanchez. So two away for Nathan Miller. A pitch from Rickmers. That's in for a strike, a right. fastball down, down the middle. The pipe with a little bit of pop on that one as it yeah, had a little bit of mustard on it. Snap the glove there of Fallon. He lays off on a pitch down and away for ball one. And yeah, that great, it up. great job of holding up there from Nathan Miller. That looked great all the way to the end. It just was low and outside. Of course, Gavin Silva, an interested onlooker as he warms up in the bullpen, getting ready for his opportunity here in the inning. That pitch down and away for ball two. Two balls in one strike. As we would expect, we have a great turnout here from the Rouse contingent. This has popped up and is playable. Hudson will come in and make the catch, and that will do it for the Raiders. They get two runs on three hits. They leave one, and after one half, it's 2 nothing Rouse. Sorry, folks out there. Had the rookie move here and still had uh, pregame on the scoreboard here for the SHN broadcast about halfway through that inning. But I've righted the ship, and the score is correct, 2-0, as Mr. Francis pointed out. With that being said, we want to thank you for tuning in and watching Rouse Raider Baseball on SH and Sports. I'm Michael Francis alongside Mr. Jonathan Casper Damas Caspar. Hey, and folks, I want to I want to prep you and let you know right now, you're in for a treat next week. Yep. Next, we have a next scheduled Tuesday. guest speaker. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep in the that, house. We'll keep that in our vest pocket. And then just want to let you know that we we have scheduled somebody yes to come in and a familiar voice and add his dulcet tones yeah, to John, johnson's SHM got five dollars five dollars in his pocket for anybody who can guess it of course you'll have to contact him to uh <laughs> to pick that five bucks up <laughs> i'll tell you what the bulk of our chat line is gone today uh, yeah. with uh miss christina in the house as right, i saw yeah. her here for the game and defensively for the Raiders, Gavin Silva on the mound, Andrew Forcell behind the plate, Oscar Salazar at first base, Rainer Heinrich at second base, Jacob Solis at short, Nathan Miller at third, Ryland Payne in left, Landon Miller in center, and Tyler Espinosa in right. Due up for the Grizzlies in the first. Chase Roberts, Ruben Cantu, and Billy McHenry. Yeah, so again, again, that rotational position out there in left. Uh, we've seen Dawson Snow out there recently. Ryland Payne has actually been in right field, and he's done a really good job defensively. He's got a very strong arm. 
And again, that position, that coach is trying to just round out this order offensively. He'd love to have a solid bat up and down this lineup. And bringing Rylan Payne in and moving him to left where Tyler Espinoza has found his spot in right field. And offensively, Tyler Espinoza is great in that two spot. Just looking for that last few components. Gavin Silva will wind and deal down and away for ball one to the shortstop. Cantu on deck, the 1-0. The breaking ball spins him off the mat, off the out of the oh, box almost. for ball two. Almost got him. Grazed him on the jersey there. A 2-0 pitch, a fastball. In for a strike. <laughs> yeah. Talk about a delayed call. He uh, was well, trying to make his mind up. Well, he did. He did yeah. go ahead and call the the line umpire down there at first just to ask him, and it was an immediate strike call. Two and one, and the pitch. Swinging a miss on a breaking ball to the outside corner. You Sitting from our vantage point, you don't see the break as much as you do sitting behind. Not at all, not at all. We're, we're not able to really see anything on that outer half. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Wow, not sure what that missed, but that had some pop on it. I would say that was high, and I saw Xander try to sneak that ball in after he received it, uh, moved it to his left. So it could have been high and outside. The payoff pitch, swinging a miss for strike three. That will bring up Ruben Cantu. Yeah. Cantu, the second baseman for the Grizzlies. Chase Roberts had a couple of things to say to Ruben on their on his way to the dugout. That drew a quick grin from Ruben Cantu, and it could have been something as simple as watch out for his breaking pitch. <laughs> First pitch, this is stroke to left. And that'll be a base hit for Cantu. Cantu doing a great job of getting the barrel on that. As well, he's, he's able looking to for that fastball, and he yeah, got it. He did, and... and Expected no, fastball, got the barrel on it, and just over Jacob Salise at short. That'll bring up Billy McHenry. First pitch offering in for a strike. And there is that really, really crisp breaking curveball from Gavin Silva that we've come to know and love. Cantu extends his lead. Another breaking ball in for a strike. And that'll find McHenry quickly in an 0-2 count. The 0-2 pitch. This is fouled back and out of play. And we'll stay at 0-2. You know, with getting that first strike out of uh, Defensively, the looking for just a ground ball here. Turn two and get a one, two, three inning. This and one's hit out towards center, and Landon Miller plays it. And he'll look Cantu back to first <laughs> as it was shallow and with his arm. Yeah, and he, he <laughs> gave the quick little hop and look over there, and Cantu scampered back to first really quickly. Probably also getting that scouting report on that cannon that Landon Miller possesses. I mean, these kids are crosstown rivals, right? And so uh, they know each other. They grew up together. They, a lot of these kids were in middle school together. And you know, I believe Cantu, one of the seniors for this Glenn Grizzly team that is a returning starter. So he's also well aware of. Pitch on the inside corner for a strike. So there's our first look at an inside pitch that was also called strike. So, again, we like to try to get a feel for what the umpire. Throw over to first, not in time, as Cantu gets back in safely. Yeah, we like to get a feel for what the home plate umpire is going to have for his strike zone. And Ronan, not really seeing that outer half. Ronan Murray on deck. A little low. Fallon will take for a ball, and the count will even. The 1-1 one, one pitch. This is hit into right, and that'll be a 
base hit, and Cantu, Cantu almost had to hop because he, he almost got hit with that hop, too. Yeah, he did. He just hopped and high been out. and uh, was able to avoid avoid being contacted by the ball. Is like you said, he would be now out. The third baseman He'd be out of the inning. Ronan Murray. Ronan Murray batting fifth in the order. He's the third baseman working the hot corner for the Grizzlies. Silva checks Cantu at second and deals down and away for ball one to Murray. The 1-0 delivery. That's just a little bit high and outside. So he definitely is not liking the high ball here from our high pitches from Silva, that that looked really good from here. And a 2-0, a swing and a miss for strike one. For sell. Looking Fallon back to first. I didn't notice that may be a courtesy runner since he's the catcher. Pitch inside for ball three. It is, and it's number 20. Three, Antoine Nelson is the courtesy runner. The 3 1 pitch. That's in for a strike. Oh. <laughs> and As Murray he, looking for the walk. Yeah, he was making his way up to first base line and looking to toss the bat to the dugout on a walk, and, and he had to retreat back to uh see another pitch yeah i guess that's the batter's <laughs> the batter's side of when a pitcher thinks he's hit a strike and the team does and they start to go and they call it a ball what was that for <laughs> the uh, leg pump from gavin silva as he looked back a base runner this is a pop-up and it is playable rainer heinrich will call it and make the catch, and that will do it for the Grizzlies. They get no runs on two hits. They leave two, and after one complete, it's Raiders two, Grizzlies nothing. On to the second we go. We want to take this opportunity to recognize our double sponsors, Austin Summit Group, Terry McDaniel and Company Investment, and Team Guerrero. Thank you very much for your generous support of Rouse Raider Baseball. Due up for the Raiders in the second, Payne, Solis, and Forcell, your seven, eight, and nine hitters. Blake Rickmers makes his way back out to the mount. Yeah, I mean, just... Uh... Very just nonchalant first inning. Not a lot of fireworks happening there. As got to see a couple of hits. First two, not unbelievable contact, you know, from the Raiders, but uh, effective enough to, right. to allow two runs to come in. And hey, is this music old enough to be called old school yet? Uh, this oh, has yeah. been around for a while. No doubt. Uh, no doubt. Yeah. It's, uh, as I was getting my arm. Right. You know. <laughs> so, yeah, as we see the Glen get their warm-ups in here, and up comes Ryland Payne with his. A nice breeze blowing through. It's The temperature's actually cooled down. The wind is coming more out of the northwest. Well, it's so humid, though. You know, crazy humid. And we'll see, have to see what the weather looks like for Friday night because we do have a front coming in ahead of some rain. Uh, hey, but at least we'll be in Saturday. a box. That's not saying much, especially after being in Lake Belton's box over the weekend. Right? That was a nice box. That was awesome. Very nice. Very Blake nice Rickmers into his windup, and he will pitch to Mr. Ryland Payne, and he will take a strike. 
That was that one looked a little bit on the low side. Well, again, inside and low, and he likes that spot. He definitely does not like the ball up in the zone. So, and one pitch, a swing and a miss for strike two, and Payne finds himself down in the count. Oh, and two. Uh oh, uh -oh. we're underneath right. some birds. I hope they don't poop. And they're they're all rotating around us. The old two pitch, a drop third strike, and Ryland Payne will beat it out. Yeah, he did, and that was a swing and a miss, which almost you'd have thought was a, a foul, but he did not make contact with that. Fallon recognized it as well, but it bounced very high off the plate and allowed Ryland Payne enough with his speed to get up the line. And well, he didn't help his batting on. average, but he helped his OBS. Yes, sir. Or OBP. Which also helps the uh, OBS. Yes. It's a combination of slugging and on base percent, right? So Lees will take for a strike on a pitch down and away. Xander Forsell on deck. The 0 1. Woo, this is hit into the dugout. For strike two. One great thing we have been able to see from the Rouse Raiders over the last several weeks is that lower part of the lineup has absolutely come alive. We've already talked about Xander Forsell being the extra base not king, and Jacob Saliz has seen himself get on the base quite frequently as well. He shows a lot of a lot of patience and a lot of maturity at the plate. You know, he doesn't get rattled being down in the count, and he battles back, and he's put some balls in play. It's a high fly ball to shallow right, and it'll be caught by Cantu. We're out number one. That'll bring up. Xander Forsell. The Zan man. Xander Forsell. Coming in to look to keep that streak rolling. Oh, whoa. Great opportunity there for Highland Payne. Payne. Yeah, picks up a stolen base. Breaks well, and honestly, the pitch was a great pitch for the catcher as it was high up in the zone. Was a ball called to Xander for sale, but something if the catcher is able to receive that high like that, you would hope that he's going to get the ball off, but it just squirted out of his glove. Throw back to second, not in time. Payne being sure to keep his <laughs> hand on the base before he puts his foot on it. Which I think was the reason why he uh, was out in the Lake Belton game. Rainer Heinrich on deck. Rickmers takes a long look in. Payne extends his lead to second. This hit down foul now the third baseline. That will even it up. One on with one out here in the top of the second. Your Raiders leading 2 nothing over the Glen Grizzlies. Well, we're getting that last little glimpse of the sun just before it ducks away for yeah. the night. Here comes the sun. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Fallon getting some work behind the plate. Ball two. Some of that self-inflicted. Yes. I would agree. I would con I would concur. <laughs> concur. Oh, wow. They actually had a great pickoff move there. Uh, unfortunately, the... Ball gets away from Rickmers. As they actually got Ryland Payne leaning towards third. This has popped up into right field. Wagner makes the catch, and that'll hold Payne to third. 
No, the not, batters are rolling over it quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, not getting quite far enough out there to pop outs. advance Ryland Payne. So. Yeah, one, two, three, four fly ball outs right now. Well, very thick air. You know, extremely humid today with the rain that we had earlier and just about balls not flying right now. Even though we do have a little bit of wind blowing out to left. Rainer Heinrich will take for a strike. Very similar to his first at bat. Exact same pitch as well. Called a strike. This one is lined to short. It's played by Roberts. The throw to first will be in time, and that will do it for the Raiders. They get no runs on no hits, and they leave one. After one and a half, it's 2 nothing Rouse. Gavin Silva makes his way back out. Jordan Comorn will, uh, I think that's Comorn. Yeah, and that was the thing, as I was thinking he was 34 going into the game against Lake Belton, but I didn't see a 34 on the lineup, and yeah, it's a 48, he was 48. Right? So it's very possible with the with that jersey uniform, change. Yeah. Yes, sir. The they were in there sporting their new uniforms against Lake Belton, which were the crimson red tops and white pants uh, with the uh, red piping, I believe, on the pants, and they're on their normal road gray with black pins tonight. Do up for the Grizzlies in the second. Wagner, Hudson, and Harlow. And no defensive changes as of yet, as would be expected here for the Raiders. Nathan and Oscar at the corners in their normal resting position. Xander Forsell behind home plate. Gavin Silva, who is always your game one starter. Jacob Salise at short. And the only Pretty real changes is we are seeing, uh, instead of Adrian Graves in left field, we are seeing Ryland Payne. And coach electing to DH for Gavin Silva tonight. Aaron Wagner at the plate, and he will take for strike one. Again, also a little bit low in the zone, but he really likes that. Yeah, one, that's fouled away for strike two. Yeah, I think that was right down, right down the middle. That's foul. Staying alive in the at bat here is a Aaron. Wagner. Got a little key and peel going there. <laughs> a. a Ron Balake. D nice. D nice. The pitch misses outside for ball one. One and two. You just take yourself to O'Shack Hennessy's. <laughs> O'Shack Hennessy's here. <laughs> Mr. O'Shaughnessy. <laughs> Pitch down and away. Oh, we won't get too far off into that wormhole there yeah. as we could really have oh, such yeah. a great skit. <laughs> or the what's the other one? High on pot. I'm from the streets. The two two. Pitch down and away for ball three. Oh, they really like that one. Did Sander Forcell as he double pumped before he threw that ball back to Gavin Silva? Swing and a miss for strike three. That will bring up the first baseman, Anthony Hudson. Hey, I just want everybody to know that I am present today. Present. Finally. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, the first baseman. Oh, 
pitch gets the outside corner for a strike. Jay Quillen. Jay Quillen. Yeah, I can't forget Jay Quillen. Swing and a miss. Looked like he was absolutely all over that. Was Anthony Hudson and just came up empty on that cut. The 0-2, this is hit down the third baseline. That'll be played by Nathan Miller to throw the first in time. I'll tell you what, Nathan Miller doing a great job there of being able to pick that ball up just before it hits the bag. Would have been fair if it contacts the bag, and Nathan just sneaking his glove in. Snow cone. Yeah, it would have been very hard to field that had he waited a half a step longer. Another pitch in for a strike. Yeah, Keen Peel's got some good stuff. Not recommended for all ages, though. No, no. We, we kept it G. That pitch misses down and away for a ball. So probably one of their one of my favorites of theirs is the East West game. And they're introducing the players. Oh no, just uh, a bad throw by Silva. Well, actually, no. Xander yeah. was the one that did he make fielded the throw? that. Yeah, Xander was the one that fielded it, but Gavin gave him really no room to field it as uh, they both ran to cover the ball. That would be an infield hit. Yeah, yeah Xander having a better Silver opportunity there, and Gavin just not recognizing that until too late, and then he just stopped, but he stopped right in the way of so Xander if you notice, this, this field, to me, seems like it plays slow. It does. Well, the turf is older turf. I mean, as we have. Swing and a miss on a pitch outside. You know, and I think, honestly, turf, just like carpet at home, needs to be restretched from time to time. And I'm not sure that that's happened where. A little poke bunt down the first baseline goes foul. For strike two. So one of the football players introducing himself is a a dude called Torque Lewis. Torque Lewis. Yes. Nevada State Penitentiary. Nevada <laughs> State <laughs> oh, Great job of Xander there sliding on his knees to keep that ball in front of him. Razzmatazz, donkey teeth, Des Moines shower handle. <laughs> shower handle. <laughs> Hingle McCringleberry. The one-two pitch. That's down and away. 2-2. Two, two. Deuce is wild for Anthony Rodriguez. Our first Deuce is wild of the night. The 2-2 two, two pitch from Silva. Oh, great ball. Pitch. Oh, gosh. Wow. Great pitch that broke in and was called inside. And, and again... Was it just high? And as as we've seen that. Well, I mean, we're sitting up high, but it looked awfully good to me. Fastball cut on and missed, and Forcell was not happy. Not at all. I mean, they were in that like, inning way longer than they needed to. Is. Well, I think he was unhappy with the calls. Well, that and as, as well as just not that opportunity to to get the runner at first on the dink hit. So. But no harm, no foul, as they got out of the beginning without any runs being scored. No runs on one hit. They leave one. After two complete, it's 2 nothing Rouse. On to the third we go. We want to take this opportunity to recognize our triple sponsors. B to Z Engineering and Four Wheel Parts. Thank you for your kind and generous support of Rouse Raider Baseball. It is greatly appreciated. I want to find a spot for my... Need to... Jonathan's a little gimpy, so he's... Yeah, I am. He's, he's playing wounded tonight, as, playing injured. Not as young as I used to be. What can I say? He took one for the team. 
And, of course, wouldn't you know, I come to a field that you have to walk half a mile. <laughs> right, to get to. To get to the. But Rouse isn't any better, Maybe although I will right. definitely find my way if I need to down by the dug or down by the uh, concession, concession and I'll walk from there. Tyler Espinosa, Oscar Salazar, and Landon Miller are due up for the Raiders. Espinosa will make his way to the plate. He's one for one with an RBI single to right. As he got the RBI on the leadoff batter. Who was able to turn a double? That I'm not sure what happened with that pitch right there. That was low and ended up bouncing off of Fallon. Back in play as Tyler was well out of the box and retreating. The 1 0 pitch, he will lay off and take for a strike. Yeah, Tyler does a really good job of going opposite field on an outer half pitch, and he showed that earlier. The one one pitch misses down and away. And honestly, that first strike was was that exact type of pitch, and he elected to let that go by. Salazar on deck. Two one, that's inside. That's safe. He called that a strike. He was. I mean, it didn't look half bad from here. It looked terrible from here. <laughs> Espy will show bunt, lay off for ball four. The Raiders have another base runner on board. They've had a runner on in each inning. Yeah, and another base but runner for the RBI King. They've stranded Osal. two. Yeah, Mr. RBI King. He has one in this contest so far. Salazar made it all the way over to third and was left stranded as the next three batters went in order. Correct. And oh, he lifts this one high and left. It's again, the ball's not flying with that. Harlow will make the catch, and Espinoza will head back to first. Of course, Espinoza way, way down the line. He was already at second when the catch was made, so not giving him an opportunity to tag up, even though that was a very deep ball. So we'll see if Coach has any discussion with Espinoza on that. I mean, you'd like to assume as a runner that, that it's not going to be played, but at the same time when it's that deep and the speed that Tyler Espinoza possesses, you would like to see him tag up on that play and, now get a runner in scoring position for Landon Miller. Throw over to first, not in time. Espy dives back in safely. Espy, a courtesy running specialist last season. Miller will hit this one to short. There's one, and the throw to first for two, and that will hit it, end it as Miller hits into an inning-ending double play. That will go 6-4-4-3. Raiders get no runs on no hits. They leave none. And on to the bottom we go. Do up for Glenn back to the top of the order. Chase Roberts, Robert, Ruben Cantu, and Billy McHenry. Tell you what, I'm going to do a quick glance here on... I don't know that that's really going to help us. I was going to hop into our uh, YouTube other games on see SHN who, and see if I see can... See Leander's plan. Yes, sir. So I always get Georgetown. No, So we have two more games on tap for you this week. Friday night, 
will be Hutto or uh, Glenn at Rouse, and then Saturday Hutto will be at Rouse. Saturday will be the senior game. Okay, so yeah, Leander is playing Cedar Park. Hey, that's a good crosstown little rivalry at too. Cedar Park. Uh, currently, Leander leading in this game one to zero. Pitch from Silva to Roberts. It's in for a strike. And that would be the only update I will be able to give, but that is something we will keep an Pitch eye on. Pitch misses low for ball one. They're saying, the scoreboard says two balls. I thought he called the first one a strike. We'll see. This is hit back up the middle. Heiner has it, throw to first in time, and that will do it for Roberts. 2-0, 1-1, all for naught. Good. Right, yeah. Don't matter anymore as soon as he made contact. Ruben Cantu will come to the plate. He's one for one with a single. Breaking ball misses for ball one. He said it missed low, is what the umpire said. This is a towering fly ball out to left. Riley Payne will. Oh, no. And he overran the ball and overrun it, it. Come back in to bounce fair. Wow. He just, he did not feel he get a glove on it. Yeah, he didn't think he'd get to it as he was running hard. And But he said it was a routine fly ball. He yeah, should have caught it. He stopped and. That will be an E7. Completely whiffed. Billy McHenry. Which does see. He got over there quickly. He ran. Yeah, Cantu well. able to get to second on that. Good heads up running on his part. Billy McHenry will make his way to the plate. He's 0 for 1. He flew out to center his first time up. He will take for a strike. Silva comes set. The 0 1 pitch. That's fouled away for strike two. Look at Coach Darling helping out his coach's box fielding percentage. Gavin trying to figure out which baseball he wants. <laughs> they threw another one in. Now he's got that blue glove like Dalton Holbrook has. Yes, he does. The 0-2. This is a poke into foul territory. Salazar not able to get to it, but what a valiant effort. Yes, I mean, he was doing everything he could. He dove, he slid, and just, just out past the end of the glove. And Nothing into the count to McHenry. One on with one out here in the bottom of the third. And, and McHenry pitch. gets caught looking. Great pitch from Gavin Silva. Now back with Grizzlies, the catcher, number 19, Jacob Fallon. Jacob Fallon will make his way to the plate. He is one for one. He singled to right his first time up. Tell you what. Picking up on a, a quick little sign there from Rainer Heinrich into Gavin Silva. Breaking ball outside. One and oh. Fastball. Swung on and missed. That will even things up. One on with two outs. Fastball outside. 
Good amount of pop on that one. It sounded good. He sold me. Another pitch outside and counts three and one. Oh, did I hear the Aggie wore him? I think I did. You did. Sure did. Beautiful sound. The 3-1 pitch. This is hit deep to left. And that will see Cantu score. Yeah, and Ryland Payne immediately understanding that run is on him. That came around. Running for the Grizzlies, number 23, Antoine Nelson. And again, Antoine Nelson, the courtesy runner, coming well, in for Fallon. Now been on the base. Both of his opportunities. Coach Crampain will call time. He will take a trip out to the mound. Probably what the thing was, the signals may have gotten messed up, and uh, he put that ball in a place where Coach was not wanting it to be with the pitch call he had. Yeah, I think this is just one of those, you know, go back, execute, don't let the one bad play out there, you know, affect the rest of your game and your pitching. You know, Gavin, one of our seniors, one of our many seniors, but has several years of playing time here for the Raiders on varsity and love to see him make just the quick adjustments that he needs to go in and execute, and set down these guys. Ronan Murray will stand in. He's 0 for 1. He flew out to second his first time up. He will hit this one out to center, and that will bounce away from Landon Miller, and that will score the second run. Again, Landon looking to be on that pitch as he got low to try to receive it, and the ball just dove far enough that it was able to reflect off of his thigh, and Coach Crimpine making his way over, doing a quick point out to Landon and a quick glance just to make sure he's okay. I think Landon was just a little slow getting up there. because He's just upset that he was not able to come up with that fly ball, that line drive. And immediately we have both of the lefties up in the bullpen for the Rouse Raiders, number three, Dalton Holbrook, and number 13, Carson Henderson. Aaron Wagner will stand in. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Pitch in for a strike. A check swing, but was called a strike. Murray extends his lead, and he gets caught looking. To end. Did I miss a pitch? Third, I think I did, too. I could have swore that was only the second pitch. That's man. what I thought, too. That's what I had. Uh, but no arguments from either side. Yeah. So I'm assuming okay. we I, missed we a pitch. We both missed a pitch. Interesting. The Grizzlies get two runs on two hits. They leave one. And after three, we're all tied up at two. Do up for the Raiders in the fourth. Andrew Sanchez, Nathan Miller, and Ryland Payne. We're going to take this opportunity to recognize our home run sponsors. Tumble 22 in Cedar Park, Mode Design Company, Utes Environmental, 
Toyota of Cedar Park and Mack High Court of Georgetown. We want to thank you all for your generous and valuable support of Rouse Raider Baseball. It is greatly appreciated. I know the Booster Club appreciates your sponsorship to help provide things for the team each and every season. Yeah, and, and, and definitely want to recognize the Rouse Raider Booster Club, you know, for all of their hard work and efforts. We know that these boys enjoy every opportunity they are afforded as a result of the fundraising and the work that's put in by everybody behind the scenes. And, you know, Rouse Raider uh, Baseball Booster Club is a big part of that. Andrew Sanchez will stand in. He will send this one down the left field line to the fence. And he will round second with the leadoff double. There we go. As the birds come out there, the birds flying. Which we back have over them again. <laughs> Where are they at? Well, I hear them. I think they were they were just giving a ode to Andrews, his double. You know, I guess so. Wings flying uh, celebration and Robert Turbay. Yeah, Robert Turbay Pinch does come running. in. Tor Sanchez. Sanchez not the fleetest of foot around the base path as he sort of stum rumbled and stumbled and bumbled his way to as Chris stand Berman up double. Would, as Chris Berman would say. <laughs> rumbling, stumbling, bumbling. But when you have that kind of power, it makes stand-up doubles very yeah. easy, regardless of your speed. Rickmers will tow in. So we'll face Nathan Miller for the second time. Miller popped up to first. His first time up, he's 0 for 1. Throw back to second. He, oh, he dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. Oh, not a person that you want to have to go see whenever you come back after that is Coach Crimpine just sitting there waiting at third base. Coach's box as we see our leadoff double. Picked off. Swing and a miss. For a strike. Rick Mers winds and deals. This is hit back up the middle to short. Roberts has it to throw to first in time. And that will retire Miller. And I'll tell you what, that's the second time that a base runner, the first time we saw Rylan Payne almost, you know, was a little bit delayed, but it was a bad throw from Rickmers that didn't allow a tag to be put down, or or we potentially could have seen Rylan Payne picked off as well. So Right. You know, the That'll bring Payne up. Payne will take for a strike. Yeah, really good communication here between Rickmers and Cantu over at second. The 0 1, that is cut on. And Payne quickly in an 0 2 count. This is popped up to right. Really? Wagner high. will come in on it. He'll make the catch, and that will do it. The Raiders go in order. On to the bottom we go. Yeah, go in order in a roundabout way. As as we've said multiple times, the leadoff yeah. batter gets on, but then his pinch runner is picked off, so it's one up, one down. And that is seen while Nathan Miller is at the plate. We do still see, again, Henderson and... Holbrook warming up still. No other defensive changes as of right now. Just making sure we don't see any any defensive changes. Do up for the Grizzlies. 
Anthony Hudson, Mason Harlow, and Anthony Rodriguez. Yeah, first inning starting out really strong for the Raider offense and just not been able to put together many more hits after that as Rickmers has really settled in and yeah, he's, he has settled in. He's retired the side in order in the last two innings. Fastball low for ball one. Yeah, we saw a bit of a rough start for him as a lot of wild pitches, a lot of pitches getting away, you know, some of those on Fallon, some of those not. You know, they're at... Uh, Hudson 0 for 1, he... Grounded the third his first time up, and he will take for ball two. The 2-0, that's inside for ball three. And I would expect if Hudson gets on that we would probably see another pinch runner. Fastball down the middle for a strike, and he was taking all the way. The 3 1, swing and a miss for strike two, and Silva works it back full. Yeah, will a put away pitch here for Gavin Silva work? <laughs> wow. I would say that was outside, would be my assumption. Yeah, I would venture to say that that's probably the case, and that will bring up Mason Harlow. And they are electing to leave Hudson in to run for himself. Hudson, the first walk issued by Silva tonight. Harlow shows bunt. And and leaves, leaves, yeah, leaves, leaves the bat down there and, for a strike. And it was a great breaking pitch again from Gavin Silva that fooled Chase Roberts. Is that's not right? Apologize. Yeah, that is Chase Roberts up. Hmm? No, we're right here. So is that a number one or a number? That's seven? Harlow. That's Harlow. We're at number okay. eight in the order. The one looked a heck of a lot like yeah. a seven. I didn't see, but yes. Rodriguez on deck. He'll show bunt and lay off. Miller crashing down. One and one. One one pitch from Silva, pitch outside for ball two. You know, would really love to see Gavin give Harlow an opportunity here as we there's not a lot of speed on the base path, giving him an opportunity for a double play. Two one. He hits this one foul down the first base side. And that will even it at two. That's more like it as he's not trying to get him to chase on a breaking pitch for the strike as versus just giving him a fastball. The 2-2 pitch. Fastball catches him looking. Now batting center fielder number eight, Anthony, number six, Anthony Rodriguez. <laughs> Anthony Rodriguez will come to the plate. He's 0 for 1. He struck out back in the second. See, it's not just me having a hard time seeing those numbers. They bleed together. <laughs> Pitch high for ball one. Chase Roberts on deck. One oh breaking ball in for a strike. Wow. That had two plus foot of break on that one. That is it was 
literally going at the shoulder of Rodriguez and just snaps right in for the strike. The one one at, in the turf for ball two. Hey, got it. It wasn't in the dirt, was it? No, I've been doing. I've been saying it's <laughs> on turf fields. I've got to get used to it if we're going to have a turf next year. Right. It's very easy for us to just say dirt all the time and grass. Swing and a miss on a slider. Yeah, well out ahead of that one and and under. By the offering of Rodriguez. A 2-2 pitch catches him looking for another strikeout. Yeah, backwards K's on both of those as each of them fooled both Harlow and Rodriguez on a pitch that ended up right down the middle. And you got to think that they yeah. were both looking for possible fastball. That's the seventh strikeout for Silva on the night. Oh, my goodness, already. And we're just now in the fourth. And he goes right back after it. Chase Roberts at the plate. He's 0 for 2. He has struck out and grounded to second. The 0 1. This is a fastball cut on and hit up to Heinrich at second. The throw to first in time. And that will end the fourth. The Grizzlies get no runs on no hits. They leave one. And after four complete, we're tied up at 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, a great defensive inning there for the Raiders to see if maybe they'll have an opportunity to wake up the bats here. So we want to take this opportunity to recognize our Grand Slam sponsors. Pulley offers Texas construction teams a new take on building permitting. As your expediter, Ashley Knight ensures accurate permit requirements, fewer rounds of comments, and full visibility at every step so you can break ground sooner. Faster permits in Texas starting today. Energy for purpose. We perform energy audits for a purpose. Stewarding energy used to compact to impact the most vulnerable and i can definitely appreciate that i work in the energy efficiency industry for austin energy encouraging our customers to participate within our rebate programs okay so interesting look here um i'm just glancing over to the bullpen obviously we're up on offense here for the raiders but Starting to see Nathan Miller get warmed up, as we did see Dalton Holbrook and Carson Henderson warming up earlier. Now Nathan Miller is in warming up. Now Nathan Miller is at third. So, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Blake Rickmer's back out on the mound for Jacob Soli, Sander Forsell, and Rainer Heinrich. So that would potentially lead to a flip-flop of positions if Gavin Silva is replaced by Nathan Miller. That would probably see Gavin Silva move to third. That pitch gets the outside corner for a strike. The 0-1. This is hit into left. That'll be a base knock for Jacob Solis. And the Raiders get another lead off the board. Yeah, great sight there to see Jacob Solis continue his good offense as he has absolutely come alive the last several games. Xander Forsell will make his way to the plate. He's 0 for 1. He flew out to right his first time up. Rainer Heinrich on deck. Rickmer's from the stretch. Forsell tattoos this one foul and will go out of play. And that would have been distance-wise long enough to be out of this park had it stayed fair. Sorry, it was out of the park. It would have been a home run had it stayed fair. I did mention a very, very thick air tonight, as you can actually see the thickness in the air here above the ballpark. See a little orange on the wispy clouds from the sun setting in the west. The 0-1 from Rickmers. Forcell shows bunt and lays off for ball one. Draw an oomph from one of the 
folks in the crowd as, as Xander just able to duck away from that, almost made contact with him even, even with the duck. The 1-1, one, one, and Forsell will bunt this. The throw to second. Oh, Nine in time. Great speed. As Solis beats it out. Jacob Solis with a great jump on the hit and run opportunity here. That'll that, be a base hit for Xander Forsell. Yes, it will, as he was able to. Jacob just sliding in and ahead of the ball. And, and now Connor Thompson coming in to run for Xander Forsell. Running for the Raiders, number 27, Connor Thompson. Not the same person that came in to run for him the first time, which I believe was Robert Turbay. No. Robert Turbay came in to run for, for um, Sanchez. Andrew Sanchez. Yeah, yes. Andrew Sanchez. Rainer Heinrich will be coming up to the plate. Again, we want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching Rouse Raider Baseball here on SHN Sports. I'm Michael Francis alongside Mr. Jonathan Caspar. Chat line is open. You can give us a shout out for your favorite player or for Rouse, or if you're a Glenn fan listening in, give a shout out for your team and your favorite player. We'll mention it on the broadcast. Rainer Heinrich will come to the plate. He's one for two. He has doubled and grounded to short. Reiner Heinrich. Reiner, Reiner, Reiner Heinrich. Reiner Heinrich. Well, at least yeah. he didn't say Henrich. Yeah, Reiner Heinrich. Okay. So Lee's will dive back in as Rickmer spins off. And then you're half tempted to tell these boys to just stay close to the bag with. And wow, what a. Oh, great play. Did he get him at first, at third? Oh, it was a force. Oh, it was a force. He just it was a to... force, and he still tagged him. But, I mean, he, he, he had him out even with the tag. But, again, it was a force. Great bunt, but just not quite getting far enough away from the catcher to allow the speedy Jacob Salise to reach third. Was that played by the pitcher or the catcher? That was played by the catcher. Yeah, there was no way the pitcher would have been able to make that play fast enough. He would have had a heck of a time even trying it to get just didn't roll far, far enough away Correct. from the circle, right? Correct. Yeah, it, was, it did not make it into the... Okay, and then and, and on the next pitch, we get a pass ball that allows the guys to advance. So, little one pitch too late there as Rayner offered at the first one. And the go-ahead run just 90 feet away for Tyler Espinosa. Espinosa one for two. He is singled and grounded to short. And, again, Tyler having a great opportunity here as I'm looking down the right field line, and I see – open field for days with the right fielder playing more towards right center. Rick Murtoe's in, and he will deal. This is lined back up to second. He'll just take the out at first and concede the run. I mean, he gave it a good look and really had an opportunity to make a play at home, but was redirected, I believe, by the first baseman, oh, Anthony Hudson, who let him know to just get the out. Oscar Salazar will come in. Rainer Heinrich is 90 feet away. Raiders take the lead. First pitch from Rickmers. High and inside will back out Salazar out of the box. He's letting them know ball. whose house this is, right? So far right now, it's Rouse's house. But... Go Rouse! <laughs> Davis checking in. Thank you for checking in. We love to hear from everybody. Yeah, that ball does hit the turf there in front of the plate for another ball. Oh, watch out, Bat. <laughs> wow. Oscar Salazar with a big swing there. And as, as the now bat goes kind of looked like an Adrian Beltre swing, right? Yes, he, he saw a big, fat... Beach ball coming at him was loving that and just made a massive cut and forgot to hang on to the bat as it sees the guys in the dugout almost 
scatter. He will hit this bend back up the middle. It'll be played by Roberts. The throw is going to be high, and that will score a run. And Salazar is going to head to second and slide in. That will go down as an E6. Yeah, he was just trying. He had a little bit more time than he thought he did, and he really hadn't set his feet as he was throwing that ball as soon as it made it into his glove and just sails high of Hudson over at first. And a little bit of a collision there between Oscar and Hudson as I'm watching Oscar shaking his left hand as he, you know, Hudson just jumping up to make the play on the ball. And Landon Miller is 0 for 2. He has grounded third and second, and he will take for a ball. Yeah, once again, I'd love to see this bat get fired up here from Landon Miller. Really, really big part of the offense here for the Raiders. And he almost gets tagged wow. in the shoulders with it. Shoulder, head, I mean, wow. Showing the little acrobatic moves there for ball two. <laughs> I don't know how he ducked low enough to not be hit with that pitch. 2-0. Oh, oh my gone. goodness, this one That's is gone. gone. <laughs> A moonshot over left field for Landon Miller. That thing is still going. And as I said, I would love to see him get this bat fired up as he just caught a hanging, breaking pitch up in the zone that he was able to unload on. And all the left fielder could do, Mason Harlow, is just turn and watch it go by. Rangers have <laughs> Rangers. <laughs> Come on. Raiders have put four across in this inning and take a six two lead. That only happens when they're playing the Astros. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I did get He a, is a Rangers I, fan, folks. He I did a get Rangers a poke fan. over the weekend though. Yeah, you did. Jonathan yeah, you sent did. me a I text. Was, I was able to jump in there a little bit with that nine two win. Uh huh. Sanchez will swing and miss. He's one for two. He has doubled and flown out to center. And that actually evens the count with the swing and miss. First pitch was high. And out of the zone for ball one. Base is clear. He left his bat up, and when he ducked down, they yeah, could have fouled that one. Well, he, he dipped the bat, but he went lower than what the bat did, and the bat was still sticking out there. He will foul this one just out of play, and Murray not able to get to it. That will even the count at two. I'll tell you what, really impressed with the athleticism of the uh, third baseman for the Glenn Grizzlies, Ronan Murray. Murray yeah. uh, just really watching him field his position. He was very quick on that ball down the foul line. Swing and a miss, and that will do it for the Raiders as he had to pull the five iron out. Pitch and wedge, five iron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, coming off of the Masters this past weekend. Vern, Vern Ludquist's last Masters. Yes, and uh, a lot of the players giving him a little – little recognition as he sat behind and was calling uh, some of the play out on the field or on the course field. Yeah. It's not baseball, right? On the course from behind one of the uh, bunkers and trees. Yeah. You know, I, from I, a chair. I saw that one where he was shaking hands with uh, Tyler, Ty Tyler, Tyler, Tyler Tiger Woods. Yes. Tiger and you just saw the point. arm sticking out of the tree. Yeah. And like, so it, it made it yeah. made the meat made the meme circuit. <laughs> Gavin Silva back out on the mound. We'll go over that inning. The Raiders get one, two, three, four runs on three hits and they leave them empty. 
I can actually see how that meme goes. Even the trees at Augusta National want to get a piece of Tiger Woods and yeah. say hi, right? Because <laughs> that, that might have been his last one as well. Oh, nice. no. He made it all four rounds. I just, Did he? Yeah, he made all four rounds, and he actually looked good on Sunday as far as not having pain. Right. Um, you know, I think the Saturday round was rough for him as, as his back was spazzing and just was, right. was just took him out of the – out of the tournament, but we'll see. Ruben Cantu will come to the plate. He will lead in the bottom of the fifth. He has reached on an error and has singled. He's one for one. He will take for a strike. Very late strike call there from the home plate umpire. And that was the exact same pitch. And called a ball. No, not a, a non-call. Yeah, and uh, Billy McHenry on deck. And again, to me, that first pitch from Gavin Silva did look to be outside, but we just don't have a great angle. This is fouled down the left field line, and that's where we saw Cantu go his first at bat, as he was able to pull a first pitch fastball down the left field line for extra base hit. Holbrook getting loose again. This is fouled back and out of play. Jonathan? Well, you're gimpy. Oh, I'm not that. Gimpy. I shoot. I'm not that. I'm, even without me being gimpy, I am not Spider-Man on that one. You ain't got your web powers? That made Play, it to the. Your that, wrist and, yeah, that made it to the actual netting here that protects balls from going on to Baghdad Road. He went around and dropped third strike. Yeah. He, yeah, Xander actually saw that as a drop third strike and tagged and Cantu looked at the home plate umpire like nah, I didn't go around and they made called for the umpire didn't argue with him but the first base umpire said yeah he did either. they called for assistance on that one and got the strikeout call Billy McHenry will make his way to the plate he's 0 for 2 he has struck out looking and flown out to center That pitch misses high for a ball. Ball two. A 2 0 pitch, breaking ball. Wow. I'm telling you, he does not like that high in the zone pitch. He has yet to call that tonight. That looks good, but I'm I'm not at his at his eye level. So the 3 0 pitch outside for ball four. And McHenry will draw the walk. It's only the second walk issued by Silva tonight. That will bring up the hot hitting Jacob Fallon. Fallon with a single and an RBI double. Yeah, and now we do see an immediate time call from Coach Crimpine, and looks like he is going with Dalton Holbrook as, yeah, he, he has seen enough here from Silva as he immediately goes to the mound and after – his second walk and a close, you know, it's a four run game now with the big four run ending that we just had from the Raiders, but the runner getting on here, coach does not want to have any opportunity here for the Glenn Grizzlies to climb back in this game. Well, we'll take this opportunity to recognize our walk off sponsor. GPS Legends Baseball. With over 50 years of professional playing experience on staff, we help young men find their direction on and off the field. It's bigger than baseball. We want to thank the fine folks over at GPS Legends. Yeah, GPS, great facility there. Been around a long time, and they've seen a lot of youth players be very successful in their program and make it to the next level. It's like a bunch of the Rouse players taking an opportunity on the 
the change in pitchers to make a run to powder their nose. They have to, they have to go in, in groups, it looks like, you know. That's uh, four right. of them. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're scampering out of the dugout. Yeah, Dalton Holbrook finding himself in another game here for the Raiders. And somebody that we've seen, you know, even from last year, uh, come in and be very effective. And now getting another opportunity here. Uh, I think there's only been about two games that we have not seen him this year. Yeah, next year we might look at getting a, started a little early, earlier in the tournament season if we can. It just depends on our availability. But uh, try to get somewhat familiar with these players and work out some of our bugs before we get into the district play. <laughs> yeah, we've had a couple of bugs, right? I mean, our video card. Our encoder. Yeah. Encoder having its issues with freezing up. I believe it came in tonight is what uh, Susie Meyer told me earlier. Okay. And talk to Coach and Susie about next year adding more cameras. So it's going to be more, more work for you switching camera angles. Unless we can find somebody that's willing to be an engineer. Oh, I can. I, I'm all over it. So we're so, going to have the ability. We're going to get another camera. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably have two or three different camera shots. Jacob, that's that's what. Some tournament time to really get familiar with it. And, you know, there's more setup time, obviously, as well. So getting those cameras positioned right. And Dalton Holbrook will face Jacob Fallon for the first time. So, As we mentioned, he's two for two. Jimmy's younger brother. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Couldn't resist. Holbrook deals outside for oh ball gosh, one. What a delayed call, but it did was he call a, strike. a strike. He did. It was like he stood up and looked and then went. <laughs> yeah, I thought that it was a ball. I mean, with where, where it positioned at. Breaking ball in for a strike. A little quicker on that call. But, yeah, Holbrook with a another one with a lot of great movement in his breaking pitch. Davis says, awesome Dalton. The 0-2. This is outside for ball one. Yeah, looking to really put him away there with the fastball. One and two, the count to Fallon. McHenry extends his lead at first. One on with one out. Oh, that will get him on, on the, the foot. foot. As he is straight up 90s hustling up the line on that hit by pitch was Fallon. That sees him have an on-base percentage of 1,000 so far tonight. Bring for the Grizzlies, number 23. That'll Antoine. bring in 23, Antoine. Nelson. Nelson. Now batting the third baseman, number four, Ronan Murray. Ronan Murray, one for two. He has popped up to second, and he has singled with an RBI. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Yeah, that got on him really quick as he was fooled a, a little bit by that pitch from Dalton Holbrook's great pitch. The 0-1, another swing and miss. Nothing into the count to Murray. Two on with one out. Great put away pitch there. Wow. wow. <laughs> I mean, no chance at all with the backwards K there from Dalton Holbrook. A lot of late snap in that three quarter slot from a big lefty. Holbrook, another one of those stands 6'3", maybe 6'4", even. Silva had 
eight strikeouts. As he goes four and a third. I will be interested to see Silva's strike out count. Swing and a miss for Aaron Wagner. Wagner is 0 for 2. He has struck out looking and swinging. Holbrook comes set. He checks McHenry at second. That pitch outside for a ball. Yeah, and a quick update in the Leander Cedar Park game. Still 1-0. In the bottom of the fourth. And they're at Cedar Park. They are at Cedar Park. Cedar Park is threatening here with runners at second and third with no outs. Oh, sorry, one out. Pitch outside for ball two. <laughs> See if Dalton Holbrook comes back in here with that Breaking pitch. Holbrook taking a little time. That yes, pitch gets did. the outside corner. That breaking ball, just like you said, cast for dominance. He did. I mean, those last two. Are you calling two, the pitches and I'm not seeing it? <laughs> those last two pitches were just uh, fastballs that just got away from him on the outer half, not able to really bring them in. And that breaking pitch is working very well for him. Deuce is wild. He gets a piece of this one and sends it out to right field. And Espinosa will make the catch as he was playing shallow. It'll go F9. Yeah, we did see three Raiders really with an opportunity there, but Tyler calls both of the both Rainer Heinrich and Oscar Salazar off as he was again, as you mentioned, playing shallow and able to be there quick. No runs on no hits. They leave two. And after five complete, it's 6 2 Rouse. On to the sixth we go. Do up for your Raiders in the sixth. Miller, Payne, and Solis. And we do now have a new pitcher for. The number Glenn five. Grizzlies, number five, Robert Sandoval. Recognize that name from last year. Robert Sandoval, number five, coming in. And we'll just do a quick glance and make sure we don't have anybody else. Seven. Number five, 13. Nope, still Ruben can too. Chase is still at second. Still Mason Harlow. Okay, so we now have a new center fielder. Which is Blake Rickmers. So Blake Rickmers has gone from pitcher to center field. And that will see Anthony Rodriguez has now slid over to right field. And Aaron Wagner's come off. And I do not see Aaron Wagner at all. So, yeah, Aaron Wagner is, has been moved. Uh, Rodriguez slides from center to right. Rickmers goes from pitcher to center. And now we have number two, Robert Sandoval, in at pitcher. So, a little bit of a revolving door there. Sandoval winds and deals. And Miller will take for ball one. The 1-0. -oh. Good pitch. Change up. Just floats into the top half of the zone, but gets the strike call. One and one the count. Pitch in the turf. 
for ball two. Yeah, both both pitchers really testing that outer half pitch, trying to see if how far they can go out. Swing and a miss on a pitch outside. Yeah, sometimes they're getting getting those pitch calls, and that's obviously why you would see Nathan Miller offer at that, which I believe would probably have been called a strike even if Nathan had swung and missed. 2-2, two, two, that's high for ball three. All right, best versus best here with the full count. Ryland Payne on deck. And Miller will draw the leadoff walk. Does draw the walk. Great patience there again. Ball on the outer half and not called the strike as that sneaks a little bit past. Oh, the... wait a minute. We got a new hitter. This is Adrian Graves. Okay. They're going to bring a pinch hitter or pinch yeah, runner Connor in. Connor Thompson, Connor Thompson coming in. Running for the Raiders. Because he was courtesy runner. running previously. Now he's he pinch did. running. So yeah, that he, will be it for him. He was a night. courtesy runner for Xander, but that was also it. He was the first time that he had come in for Xander. So, so Adrian Graves comes in for Ryland Payne. And maybe it will be to see Nathan Miller. I mean, again, you do get a little bit more speed out of Connor Thompson over Nathan Miller, but we well, may see Nathan Miller. he's also a left fielder, so he may be going out to left. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Adrian Gaines. I, yeah. I was talking about Connor Thompson coming in to run for Nathan Miller. Oh. Nathan Miller may be going back to warm up a little bit more, uh, possibly, to be seen in the next inning, which would then bring Gavin Silva in at third. But, yeah, Adrian Graves as a left fielder. And he will um, pop this yeah. bunt up. Oh, great bunt. Gonna... Wow. That'll go into center field. <laughs> well, and Connor Thompson was stuck in no man's land there as the ball was bunted, but wow. it was a pop fly bunt. Connor had to actually freeze, not understanding whether he was going to have an opportunity or whether the ball was caught. And, caught, yeah. So. And it just snuck under the glove of Sandoval, who was charging it. And work, nonetheless, Connor Thompson able to make his way to second, drawing the throw that works its way into the outfield, but Connor not understanding that until it was late, so he couldn't advance to third. Throw back to second, not in time, as Thompson just gets back in. Yes. Roberts playing him close. Sandoval from the stretch. Thompson feigns a lean to third and will get back to second as well, Fallon that, quickly yeah, up. It drew the attention of Fallon, but I think that was more of a flinch from <laughs> Thompson. Two on with no outs. Throw down to second. Will not be in time as Thompson gets back in. And I believe that was a strike Safe. call. Yes, it was. Jacob Salee's doing a good piece of hitting earlier in his second at bat. The 1-1, one, one, this is Again. another bunt that's fouled back. You're jabbing at it. You just can't jab at a bunt. You've got to let, let the hit ball the come to the bag. Yeah. Yes, sir. And... I mean, there. I mean, there is a point to that where there is slap bunting, right? There right. is a strong bunt that is an attempt to get the ball to go past the pitcher. And so, Lee's will hit this one out to left. Thompson will slide into third. A belly flop slide, but it's effective either way as he's able to make his way on the on the tag up to a ball that was deep enough from Jacob Salise that, well, that was just as good as a bunt. Sacrifice fly. Yeah. You know, it works as the as a, a, a as, as well as a bunt, right? but it on a did not see bunt. Adrian Graves. Advanced to second, so now we have runners on the corners versus runners at second and third. So I'm not sure why Adrian is still at first. Great pitch, pitch in for a strike to Xander Forsell. 
Porcell is one for two. He has flown out to right and is singled. Yeah, the Raiders coming off the big last inning of four runs is looking to put some more up. And he hit this one down the third baseline. Ah, fouled. He fouled it. I guess he off, got off of his, his foot. foot. Yes, sir. Yeah, it, it it fouled off of Xander's foot. And... 0 and 2 the count. Tell you what, again, another really big gap in the left center. Rainer Heinrich on deck. This is hit out to left. Throw to third. Oh. It'll be in time as Graves. Graves just did not seem to be running very quickly. I don't know. Did you catch that? No, Graves was running very quick. He? he rounded second and never even looked, never even attempted to stop, which I, I don't know that that was as <laughs> wise as it could have been with a very, very shallow field from Harlow in left field. He was able to, to catch that and didn't require a cutoff. Adrian would have been there easily had there need been a need for a cutoff, but Harlow was shallow enough that he was able to make the throw, and, and he had Graves by three steps. So, and then we'll bring up Rainer Heinrich. Uh, Dawson Snow did come in to run for Xander as the new courtesy runner. Number four, Dawson Snow. The throw down to second will be in time. And that will go 2-6. Wow, that and just that went will... from a great opportunity to only one run really fast as we, man. Heinrich was at the plate, so he will come back in the seventh. The Raiders get one run on two hits. They leave none. Yeah, none as everybody, yeah. you know. Dawson Snow comes in and immediately breaks to get the. Just a good throw down by Fallon. Yes, and Adrian Graves is now in left field. Still Nathan, Jacob Salis, Rainer, and Oscar. Xander is coming out. Yeah, no other changes other than Adrian Graves does replace Rylan Payne in left field. Again, as Coach and I talked before the game, Adrian, great defensive player, a very strong arm, as you pointed out, when he was warming up. Uh, I believe that was at uh, Hayes. And you're like, who is that throwing, warming up from – Right center throw into the line, third baseline. You know, during warm-ups is, again, Adrian possesses a very strong arm. You know, so we'll, we'll see how that moves here as Adrian able to lay down the bunt. Not necessarily, I mean, it was effective, <laughs> but wasn't necessarily... The most technically sound punt, right? I guess would be the best way to put that, but effective as it was able to drop in front of Sandoval and just past Fallon and then put on the brakes, allowing Connor Thompson to advance and Adrian Graves to be on. We do see Carson Henderson back up again in the bullpen, warming up. Leading off the Grizzlies, the first baseman, number 22. That'll Anthony bring up Hudson. Anthony Hudson. He is 0 for 1. He grounded the third and drew a walk. He is facing Holbrook for the first time, a pitch outside. I was about to say, if he, he had that pause look on his face like he was possibly going to come off that one. I mean, if he calls that one a strike. This guy needs help. 1-0, that's high and outside for ball two. Mm -hmm. 
Defense, no. oh, sorry, defensively, he just does see the outfield playing pretty shallow. That breaking ball in for a strike. Even with a very big man up at the plate here, Hudson. Ooh. A little breaking ball. Assume is... low. Three and one. Got to figure that was low as it was right over the top of the plate. Fastball cut on and missed. For strike two, and the count works back full. Now we'll see, does Dalton go back to challenge Hudson as he did there with the fastball, or does he try to put him away with the breaking pitch, which has seen itself finish a bit high and low? Swing and a miss for strike three. And that will do it for Hudson. And he does challenge him with the fastball again there. Mixing things up as opposed to just trying to rely on that breaking pitch as the put out pitch. You love seeing that, right? You want to keep the batters off pay off balance, and you're going to do that by mixing up your pitches, not relying on one thing to be your out pitch. That is fouled off for a strike. Change up there from Holbrook. He's Harlow out, well out in front of that. Just able to get a piece of it, though. He's one for two. He has singled and struck out looking. <laughs> well, I thought that might be a strike for me. He's <laughs> no, just going to take wait. his delayed we gotta wait. strike call, but he didn't call it. So. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. I was waiting for it also. Keeping us on our toes over here. Nothing but aces for Harlow, and he will change that with that swing and go one and two. Of course, Ace is referring to the one ball, one strike, a one out. Count. One, two pitch, a swing and a miss for strike three. Yeah, very hard to make contact with the swing there from Harlow as he's actually backing out of the box while he's making the swing. So We do have a pinch hitter. Number 11. How about a number 11, Joe Brennan. And we do Joe get... Brennan. Fox is all over this as Joe Brennan comes in. His first pitch he'll take for a strike on the inside corner. Nice tight curve fastball there. Or tight curving breaking pitch. Excuse me. The 0 one, that's high and outside for ball one. That'll even it up. See Jonathan Wilson there behind home plate, getting his footage. The 1 1, a fastball down the middle for strike two. Another great person to follow on X on social media is Jonathan Wilson. He catches a lot of play. Uh, and, 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 you know, again, another one of those that he'll he'll post. This is popped up and playable. Oscar Salazar will track it and make the catch. And they go in order in the sixth after six complete. It's 7-2, Rouse. On to the seventh we go. Yeah, I'm going to say Jonathan Wilson post does post a lot, both sides. Uh, whether it's an opponent that we're playing, it does see him travel around. If we're, you know, not playing or he's out of town or what have you, he'll he'll find other games to post out there and yeah, he will keep everybody uh, apprised of what's happening in the world of baseball, high school baseball, for your players. Do up for the Raiders. Rainer Heinrich, Tyler Espinosa, and Oscar Salazar. And we now have a new score in the Leander 
Cedar Park game. Leander is now up 2-0. Cedar Park once again is threatening as they have seemed to have done every inning. And they've left the bases loaded twice. Wow. As Cedar Park. Uh, in their game, and they now have runners on the corners with one out in the bottom of the fifth. So, again, a lot of base runners in those games, which are seeing the innings take a lot longer. And Leander is in the middle of a pitching change right now. Once again, playing at Cedar Park. Nerner Heinrich makes his way to the plate. Leading off for the Raiders. Number nine, Reiner Heinrich. Reiner Heinrich. Reiner, Rainar. Rainar Henrich. We've had Henrich, yeah. Reiner had, Henrich. Had several different names for he got Mr. The, Heinrich. He got the Heinrich part yeah. right. but Sandoval back out on the mound, and he will deal a strike down the middle. The old one swing and a miss for strike two, and Heinrich quickly down 0 and 2. Well, as he was his first at bat whenever he was able to hit that shot to right center. 0 2 outside for ball one, and it looked like Rayner was actually looking down when that ball came across. And I think you recognize that it was well outside. 1 2, that's outside for ball two. Yeah, he's sort of leaning, you know, just understanding the balls. Espinoza on deck, the 2-2 pitch. That's in the turf. Wow, great pitch for ball three. Fallon. <laughs> and just like that, starts out 0-2 and, and brings to a full count. Sandoval from the windup. The payoff pitch, that's low for ball four. And... Rainer draws a leadoff walk, much like Nathan Miller did back in the first or back in the sixth. Now batting number 12, Tyler Espinosa. And that run did come around to score for the lone run of the sixth inning. Definitely not anybody we'll see pinch run for. Is Rainer Heinrich. <laughs> Sandoval goes to the there stretch, go. and Espinosa will send this one into left with a base hit. There we go. He has done well tonight. Well, he, he didn't is knock the he didn't single knock the cover walk. Off of it. <laughs> he had an RBI uh, ground out to second, and now another single. So two RBIs on the night for SP. Yeah. You know, and once again, he didn't just cr absolutely crush that ball, but it was very effective. And a lot to be said for that is getting the ball in play. Salazar will take for a strike, which looked something kind of high and outside. It did look high and outside, but, you know, again, that borderline pitch that seems to be called. Pitch down and away for ball one. <laughs> Landon Miller on deck. Salazar will Great punt this pitch. one down the third Great baseline, point. and there will be Great no play. Point. And that is absolute senior recognition there by Oscar Salazar. He understood the third baseman was playing way deep. Nobody was expecting a bunt. The ball was halfway there before he actually threw the bunt down and just patting it right down the third base line and it's an easy base hit. And Landon Miller comes loaded. to the plate with bases loaded. He is one for three with a home run. A two run homer at the time. And, and he hits this one in the left, one. but it'll be a sack fly. Oh, 
There it is. I'll tell you what, it looked at the exact same look as the home run ball that he had hit in the last inning, but that one didn't quite have the distance as he didn't quite barrel it up, and, but works as a good sack fly to left. Runners on the corners and an RBI. And again, with that, we do not see the tag up from Oscar. going to bring a pinch runner for yeah, Salazar. Oscar Salazar did not tag up on that, which was very interesting. And Diego Gayton. Am I seeing this and wrong? Courtesy run. Who does that look like this pitching? I don't know. If you see colors. What team looks like it's pitching right now? Lehman? Well, it's, it's Leander and Cedar Park. Oh. Well, what do you mean? Who's pitching? What team, color-wise? Oh, Leander. Right. That's yeah. evidently not the case because unless they're putting it in the wrong area because they're now showing that that Leander is now up 4-0. Oh, wow. But I don't think that that's correct because the last two runs to come across were the teams in white, so. Well, then they must have messed up. It just should be 2 2 then. Maybe. I, I don't know, folks. I was trying to give that you one some up. Fouled, fouled away for Sanchez, and he's down in the count, nothing in two. You know, trying to give a an update on the game, but I don't know that I'm. Sanchez will foul this one back, and the count will remain nothing in two. Yeah, now it shows 5-0, Leander. Yeah, I think their scoreboard's messed up. Scoreboard is uh, operators not. Pitch outside for ball one. Runners on the corners with one out for Sanchez. Nathan Miller on deck. Foul tip. Oh, and he caught it. Oh, he did not catch it. Wow, okay. I was like, he caught that, but no, it's in and out of the away. glove of Fallon. In and out. Yeah, so we can't even trust that score. I can't. No, I, I mean. Throw down to second. Got him. Well, get Gaten as Fallon has thrown two runners out. And I'm just, did he mess up on the sign? And Espinoza, you know, it was, was it one of those where they try to get the runner at first to get the runner at third in? And that could have been a delayed steal pause which you will see quite frequently from Coach Crimpine, and maybe that's what the call was. And Gaten just ran all the way through and slid as opposed to stopping. And, yeah, I'm seeing Coach Crimpine make his way over, and he's pretty adamant and animated here as he's discussing something with somebody in the dugout. It's a high fly ball to left. Harlow will make the catch, and that will do it for the Raiders. They get one run on... Two hits, and they leave one. After six and a half, it's 8-2 Rouse. Yeah, and I mean, and again, looking at the looking at how it reads, I mean, we're consistent with the top of the sixth. They're showing Leander is winning 6-0. to zero. But now they're top of the sixth, which if that is Cedar Park, or if that's Leander, it just, yeah. It yeah, it doesn't, their scoreboard is off. Yeah, I'm, I'm just turning that off. <laughs> so just, we may have thought that, not doing me that good. Cedar Park, or, yeah, Leander was up 2 nothing, and it was Cedar Park that was up <laughs> the whole time. Uh, uh, yeah. Who knows? Carson Henderson has come on in relief. Just 
Phil Jacob, Oscar. Yep, and Adrian Graves still in left field. So, yeah, the only defensive change here as Coach makes his way over to the home plate umpire to let him know that Carson Henderson, as Mr. Francis mentioned, has made his way in. Do up for the Grizzlies and the seventh, Roberts, Cantu, and McHenry. Henderson looking to close out this game and keep it at the 8-2 current score. And I will go ahead and be ready here with... Game changer. I can tell you what I could really run down real fast. Holbrook and leading off the Grizzlies, the shortstop. Silva the Silva Chase, going runner. four and a third, allowing four hits, two runs, not earned, eight strikeouts with two walks, and Dalton Holbrook going one and two thirds. No hits, no runs, three strikeouts and no walks. So good numbers there for both our Pitcher so Swing far. and a miss for strike one. Chase Roberts 0 for 3 on the night. He's grounded to second twice and struck out. Swing and a miss on a fastball for strike two. Pitch misses low for a ball. He will poke this one out to first. Salazar will take it himself. He'll step on the bag and just be that will do it for Roberts. That will go three U. Yeah, Oscar doing a really good job of making sure he had that ball before he made his way to first. Yeah, there was no lobbing at that time because yeah. Roberts has got speed. For sure, and actually Roberts slid into first trying to get there a little bit quicker and still was not able to beat Oscar Salazar to the bag. Ruben Cantu will come to the plate. He has singled, reached on an error, and struck out. First pitch in for a ball. Almost hitting the foot of Cantu there. Fastball. This is hit out to left center, and Landon Miller tracks it, makes the catch for out number two, and that will bring up Billy McHenry as the Grizzlies are to their final out. Yeah, and Carson Henderson coming in, five pitches. Two outs, being very effective, throwing for strikes. Breaking ball, gets the outside corner. Another one of those delayed calls. I was waiting for it. I was like, that's a, hang on, let me wait until he called it. Yep, that's yep. a strike. <laughs> they one, a fastball, cut on and missed. I actually said he foul tipped it. He did. I heard a little bit of a click there. A final strike. Fastball fouled away. Staying alive, staying alive. Uh, 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 How did I know you were going to go there? <laughs> oh, I think one of the best commercials was one of the uh, Super Bowl commercials with the ants. The 0-2 pitch from Carson Henderson. That is oh, hit into God. left. That'll be a base hit. Just for McHenry. Sneak past the glove of Jacob Saliz as he dove for it and ball finding its way into the outfield. That'll bring up Jacob Fallon. He's yet to be retired. He's one for two with a single, a double, and he's been hit by a pitch. Well, Henderson wanted his opportunity at Fallon. I think that's what it was. It's like, I'm going to retire this guy. Breaking ball high and outside. 
yeah, everybody else on this Glenn side has been retired tonight. So. Anderson deals a fastball in the turf for ball two. And one thing you got to watch out for, and I don't see a rosin bag anywhere around, or as is a very humid yeah, my night fingers tonight. Are sticky. sticky, yes, and you can have one heck of a time as a pitcher. Swing and a miss. If it gets too sticky. Two and one, the count to Fallon. Henderson from the stretch. He gets the sign for so from Forcell, and Fallon will call time and we'll reset. What's funny is watching uh, Fallon, his leg kick, his front leg kick is in rhythm with the guys cheering for him from the dugout. Swing and a miss on a little outside fastball. He's all happy feet in the in the batter's box is Fallon. Two two. Deuce is wild. And the pitch. A fastball. Close. Just a bit low. A bit low. For ball yes, three. That definitely drew, drew some intense eyes there looking in. Like, is he gonna call it or not? As we had to wait for the paused call from home plate umpire. The payoff pitch. Catches him looking for strike three, and that will do it. And Henderson retires him for the first time tonight. And the Raiders pick up game one, seven to two. Was not a very pretty game, Jonathan. No, I mean, it saw some just really base running mistakes. Base running mistakes, yes, sir. And um, not really. Not really outs, you know, um, or sorry, not very, you no know, errors, right, defensively um, that I saw for the Raiders, which is a, a great thing. Um, yeah, no errors defensively. And uh, that's that's a great thing to see. Um, no errors. Let me see. Were there any errors defensively on the other side? Uh, no, sir. So... You know, great defense on both sides. Uh, great to see that part of it. But, again, some base running errors that are coach, I'm sure, is going to be very quick to point out in the next practice on being able to pick up on the pickoff move right. of the pitcher. You know, look at the, the hips and recognize what's happening on the leg and as opposed to looking at – shoulders and arms because those could be deceiving and all you need is a half step really to be called out you know on a diving back and especially on a good pickoff move we had another opportunity to be picked and that didn't happen earlier because Rickmers just had a bad throw but had a had a runner so right and you had one run that scored on that uh fly out what should have been a fly out by Ryland Payne and he ended up coming around uh, scoring. Nelson did. So that was one of them, that, uh, a runner that didn't need to be on. And so that was an unearned run. Yes, it was. So and uh, just a real quick recap, I mean, as I already went over uh, pitching-wise, uh, Gavin Silva going four and a third, getting the win. Dalton Hobart coming in for one and two-thirds and then closing it out. Carson Henderson, who will at one inning, allowed one hit, no earned runs, one strikeout, no walks. So combined, 12 strikeouts and only two walks for the pitchers. So, again, really good there. Improvement over the early part of the year where we saw multiple walks. Still getting a lot of strikeouts, but, you know, a lot more walks than what we would ever like to see. And the game against Lake Belton saw a couple of errors, you know, that allowed for – almost all of their runs in that game to be scored and would have been a different outcome. Uh, obviously, Raiders taking the loss to Lake Belton uh, this past Saturday, but defensively was a little bit of a rough game for them. They improved tonight and looked really good out there defensively and uh, did their part offensively, being able to post up 10 hits 
uh, with the eight runs being scored, uh, seven RBIs, and 28 uh, at-bats for the, the Raiders. Camino Stapleton checking in says from Crawford, New Jersey, says, good game, guys. Thank you, sir. We really appreciate you chiming in and adding to our game. You know, we'd love Absolutely. to have more folks out there jumping in on the chat line. I mean, obviously, if everybody out there is at the game, great. Right. You know, <laughs> you know, we don't need to see any chat, but those that can't make it, by all means, yeah. jump in. Jump in. We, we like to have fun, talk it back and forth. Yeah, let us know you're watching and where you're watching from, and we'll give you a shout out. And if you're here watching for a specific player, heck, or if you're just – here to watch the game because you enjoy yeah. baseball. Let us know. You know, we're we're be more than happy to to let you, you know, and even have conversation with you. So right, for sure. The happy final here at Glenn High School, Rouse eight, Glenn two. Be with us on Friday night as we will host the Glenn Grizzlies at Raider Field and be with us Saturday as we will bring you the senior game versus Hutto. That is, I believe, scheduled for a 1 o'clock game time start. So for Jonathan Caspar, I'm Michael Francis. Thank you for tuning in and watching Rouse Raider Baseball here on SHN Sports. Good night, everybody. Good night.